close to him. Some of you are having some wayward thoughts. And some of you, and I'm telling you, these thoughts are not your thoughts. The enemy wants to plant seeds and they come by thoughts. He wants to plant seeds in your mind by thoughts. And if you start eating off of the thoughts and then the seeds become roots. And as the roots begin to come forth, then you begin to produce what the thoughts were that were really not of you. And so the thoughts come because they feel like there is a there's a ground that they can take a resident in. They feel like there's a ground that they can plant themselves in. But you gotta tell them thoughts that are against God, against the knowledge of God, against the will of God. This is not the ground that you're gonna be planted on. This is not the ground that you're gonna be seated in. This is not the ground that's gonna be fertilized in.
soul. He want a stable mind. Yes, he want a healthy spirit. In the name of Jesus. My Lord. Come on, he want a stable life. He said, I want you to be in good health. My Lord. Even as your soul. Hallelujah. I want you to have good health, good prosperity. Even as your soul prosper. This order my steps. Order my steps. Order my steps. In your word. In your word. I don't know who that's for, but order my steps. Order my steps in your word.
esteem him lonely. We esteem him lonely. We esteem him, my dear Yonder.
Come on, just just lift them up with your praise. Just release the fragrance of the aroma of your worship unto Him. There's a fragrance that comes from you when you release that unto the Lord. There's a sweet, the Bible calls it a sweet smelling aroma that is offered up with the angels. The angels take that aroma, the aroma of your prayer, the aroma of your worship, the aroma of your praise, the aroma of your thanksgiving. And they take it before the throne of God, according to Revelation chapter 8. They take it before the throne of God and they offer it unto the Most High. That's one way your praise and your worship gets to the Lord. It's been offered through the angels. I know. But there is also where you, your prayers, hallelujah, because of the blood, my God, I hear you, Lord Jesus, that your prayers ride on the blood. Hey, God, now my enemy say that when you pray because you are saved and you are sanctified and you have been dedicated and you have been set apart and you are devoted to him that when your praise and your worship is released to the Lord that oh my God because of your prayer has been purified and your worship has been purified by the blood of the Lamb because life is in the blood and your prayers are mixed with the blood Your worship, I accepted your consecration. 
the very first thing that you consecrated yourself. But there was something holding up in the flight path from heaven to earth. Hallelujah. And so sometimes we don't think God heard us. Sometimes we don't think maybe he is listening. But the first thing you pray, some of you, oh God, I hear this, I don't know who this is for. But the very first thing you pray to ago. God said, I heard you three years ago. I heard you two years ago. I heard you five years ago. I heard you ten years ago. Oh my God. I heard you the very first time that you prayed. Hallelujah. Oh my God. Because you think it's been a long time. You've been praying about this thing. You've been believing God for it. He said, I heard you. I know it's been 10 years, don't you? Don't think, hallelujah, that I'm not in of God. Don't think that I'm not concerned just as much as you are. The woman with the issue of blood waited a long time. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The man standing at the pool waited a long time. But there was a day called suddenly. There was a day called
hallelujah, to such a degree the man went on into the temple. Yes. Leaping. Hallelujah. Jumping. Yeah. And praising God. Yeah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory. And that man began to be a testimony of what God had done to such a degree that people got upset. Because he was testifying and praising and worshiping God. They was upset about the one that did. Yes. Hallelujah. But it, huh, even the more they push in, even the more. They believe even the more. They preach even the more harder. Hallelujah. They say, God, hallelujah. Do you hear these threatenings? Do you hear these things that sing about us? Hallelujah. Do you see that talking about?
that the enemy is covering up. My Lord, hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, I'm telling you, I'm going to go in detail with it later on in the year, but yes. right now I'm just getting my, getting the revelation, getting the understanding. Yes. Yes, in other sir. words, we're hearing people come in and tell us that we're supposed to be going to another level. Yes. Yes. Right? We know that's another level. Matter of fact, even when you get to that level, it's another level. Yes. And when you get to that level, it's another level. Yes. So we already know that. Yes. My question is, why? And so, God is raising up men and women, hallelujah, who hear his voice and who can articulate. Because, you know, there are times when people can't articulate what God is saying or what, is, what God is doing. They can't honor it. But I'm telling you, God is raising up men and women of God that can articulate what he's saying in the spirit for now. The unusual things for this generation, he's giving articulation. And just like I said, the seven thunders, you don't know what they are. Ten toes in, in our day. My Lord. He says, Dad, she'll meet the 
themselves with the seed of men, just like they did in Genesis chapter 6. But see, in Genesis chapter 6, they were giants. And so you knew there was something different, but this time they looked like you. They're your same size. My Lord. Yeah. And they got intelligence outside of your norm. My God. That has been downloaded in them by, oh my God, I don't want to say it because I know I'm going to run everybody off. Not y'all, because y'all understand. That's been, I'm just going to say it. Downloaded by demons. I say that word. So, with that being said, I'm telling you, in California, it's full of them. I'm telling you, saints, what I've read and also what I've heard from people who have interviewed mothers and fathers who have kids that they call star kids. Now, I'm supposed to be really releasing this later on in the year. I'm, I'm preparing for something, but apparently, I don't know why, why right now. I, I have no... I, I, I don't know. I don't know. But this is why it's so important for us to stay in the will, stay in the presence, stay in prayer, stay in consecration. And that your eyes may be open yes, Lord. Yes, God. to see in the spirit. Yes, Lord. I'm telling you all, All the stuff that I used to tell us months ago, years ago, is coming to pass right now. Right now. I'm not talking about down the road. I'm talking about right now in our day. And we're still, oh God, and we're still, I'm not saying us, hopefully, but the body of Christ as a whole, we're still having fun. We're still having fun. And it's serious business. And I'm going to tell you now, those who would get serious, God, how many will look for you? If you would get serious about this hour that we're in. Matter of fact, he said that there will be a generation that will come up that will seek his face. He said there would be a generation. And if you go up and read that passage a little bit before that, he started talking about us talking to the other generation. Hallelujah. And so young people, hallelujah. Yeah. <sighs> let, me, let me solidify this a little bit more. Even um, there, was a, there, was a, there was a boy. There was a boy. Hallelujah. Um, that had an um, experience where he left his body and I'm not going to go into a whole lot of detail uh, with this, but he left his body, young man, young man and he lived to be about 13 years old, but he had that encounter early in his life, I think it was around about 6, if I'm not mistaken, maybe give or take, somewhere in there and uh, he got caught up in the, in the spirit of um, um, he's a, he was an artistic boy, couldn't 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 really talk, and uh, but God would speak to him and tell him things that are to come. That it's been some years ago, years ago. He's been gone for quite some time now, I think. Um, but in this process of him hearing the voice of God. He's telling his mother, you know, just everyday situations and things, telling her where to go, because God's going to do something here or there. Um, to one thing, think one time he told her to go to the mall. Uh, there's a blessing for you at the mall. And, and there was a young lady there that the Lord had highlighted. She was in witchcraft, and God wanted to heal her. God wanted to save her from that. Mm -hmm. So he sent them to the, to the mall, and um, they began to talk to a group of girls, and they, the first one they talked to wasn't, wasn't the right one, so the mother was kind of like, oh, he missed it. He missed it. And actually, there was, was a young lady that was dressed in all black, this gothic color, and uh, began to hear the overtone of what was being said to the other girl. She said, no, that's me. <laughs> that's me. That's me. 
That's me you're talking about. This is just one confirmation of this young, young, young man. Uh, another confirmation, he told his mother that when he would hear God talk to him, he, uh, when he was in heaven, that the Lord told him that his brother was going to go into the army and uh, he's going to be on the wrong side. And uh, he's going to go off, he's going to veer off, he's going to turn and do things that are not, that's not like God. And um, after that, he would change though, he would come back. And that happened. Um, he actually went into the army. He's, he's out of the army. And um, I'm going to pray that there's, there's another sign of that. So there was another confirmation. And so he's just, she, the, the lady is just giving these testimonies. It was on Sid Roth, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, on Sid Roth. And so, uh, again, I might be messing up the information on this, but the point is this. She began to talk about the end times. She said that the type of spirits that's going to come up on the end in the end times, in the end days. And I don't say what they what she said they would do, but it's going to be very ferocious, very evil. And, and I know that they're coming after the individuals who have the mark of the beast. For sure. Without a doubt. People who do not fear God. People who do not give their heart and life and soul and body to God. These evil spirits are coming. And they're going to wreak havoc on the earth. This is what the little boy said. The Lord told him this. You know what? I'm going to go into a little bit more detail. Because God said it. So if we don't like it. Just don't be one that this type of activity will happen, that these spirits are so ferocious that they will literally eat the individuals that are coming. That's why we have to come up. So when we want to get something like that, we're in position, we're, we're moving in, in sync with God. And nothing is in the way. And nothing is in the way to where we can stand against this. My Lord Jesus. That's not all. That's just one. But sometimes God has to shake us to let you know this is serious. serious. Sometimes we don't want to say nothing, but God is saying it. And I'm not going to go much farther than this, but I really want to talk about the secrets of kingdom wealth, and we're going to get to it. And I don't know why the Lord felt necessary to bring this up today. Matter of fact, to prove to you, I told Brian when he, when he was getting ready to pull up Facebook, I said, title it, The Secrets of Kingdom Wealth. That's what I'm going to talk about. Kids and parents alike, give your life to God. I'm, look, I saw G-Baby just kind of standing up with his hands up. My Lord. And I don't know if he was just being honest. I don't know if he was being made to. I know at one point in time, I think they was telling him to stand up because he was getting stupid. But, but there was one time he was on his own. He just standing there with his hands up. Mm -hmm. yep. Both hands. Yeah. Yeah. You got the candles talked about it, but it's in the scripture. You got to come to the kingdom of God like that. I'm not talking about with the hands lifted up, but I'm talking about with a heart. Yes. See, children, they don't have an agenda. See, when they come to God, they don't, they don't. They don't have an 
probably legit. As a matter of fact, they probably already know how to fix fix their their minds. Yeah. Yeah. Have been trained. And so they come simply because I feel something. I sense something. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. She probably didn't know some of the stuff that we were saying. Probably didn't even understand some of it. But God moved on. Because he was making himself available. He said, such is the kingdom of heaven. It, it, see, to, to really encounter the kingdom, you have to come humbly before you God. Humbly, humbly. And when we do this, hallelujah, it sets us up to encounter the one that loves us and sustains us. And humility lifts us up in that place. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. This is what I'm saying to you kids. Some of you, you refuse to humble yourself. Yes, my Lord. My God. Because you have your own mind, your own way of doing things. Because now you have grown. And so now the thoughts of G is not there anymore. When you was a child, you spoke as a child. You acted like a child. But now that you're grown, you left the foundation. Now that you are mature or to understand a little bit, just a little bit, you left what you learned when you was a child. say anything to you today. Do not forget what has been stored into you. Do not, my God, where is he at? Do not be off. Do you hear me? When you get to be 9, 10, 11, 12, do not veer off from what your mother and father has been putting in you. Amen. Amen. That's all right. Let him, let him, let him, let him, let him be. Look at me, you, baby. Do not veer off when you get old enough to start thinking on your own. The, the thoughts that they have formulated in you now is what's going to carry you. Do you understand? To some degree. Um, people have already said this. Um, you will be one that will resist in the hour of temptation. And I'm not talking about just resist and not follow the crowd. I'm saying you will be one that stands up as the prophet of God. He said, I will not allow this in my house. This will not be allowed on my watch. I will decree and I will declare. And things will happen and move on behalf of the voice of God that's coming through your mouth. The angels of God are already assigned. Yes, God. Hallelujah. Right now, because you're young, you just don't know. And that's fine. But this is why the parents come in at, to train you on the path. My Lord. And they might not know to a degree. This is why they put you in front of it's supernatural. Yeah. <laughs> so if we don't know how to train, we put them in front of somebody that do. Yeah. It's still just like it because you're the one guiding their life. My Amen. Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Matter of fact, you better lift your hands right now. Father, in the name of Yeshua, give Gerald Tobar the wisdom, knowledge, and revelation. First of all, in the knowledge of you. And secondly, in the knowledge of these kids that are now coming forth as star children, designer babies, crystal and rainbow children as they call them. In the name of Jesus. That as he is growing up and as mm, that you will give him so, so topic, invisible vision yes. to see in the realm of the spirit yes, my baby I'm not all yes. that he will be able to detect every foul and unclean and wayward child 
that has been brought forth and birthed by aliens. My Lord. I know y'all never heard that being said before. My Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, God. And if I have to help you and train you, hallelujah, I do that. I know you might not understand it now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. But the, oh, God will bring it back to your remembrance, the things that he has said to you. The Holy Ghost will bring it back to your remembrance. And when it happens, there will be a supernatural influence. There will be a supernatural download and uploading into your spirit. Just like these so-called ones are you. That it will download and upload. And then as that happens, you will stand up, my young lady and soul. You will stand up in the court, my. You will stand up in the kingdom of God. You will stand up in the Holy Ghost. You will stand up in the glory. You will stand up. Yes, okay. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that nothing that will come against you shall stand. There will be a shield. There will be a hedge about you, young man. That you will be protected from any unnatural, supernatural evil that comes your way. A thousand fall. Ten thousand at your right. Yes, God. But it shall not come nigh thee. Yes, God. Yes, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Lord. My Lord. 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 My God. Hallelujah, God. See, y'all, y'all. Oh, God, hear the Lord. See, what y'all. Because, because the enemy. Let me, let me help you out. So you won't think I'm too crazy. That, that little boy said that these spirits are generated. They are demons that are also coming through aliens. See, I've been saying that and it sounds crazy. I've been trying to let people know that these things are not what they seem and it is real. That little boy. Do I got a witness? Years ago, I told her, I said, honey, there's something about these so-called aliens. I told her, I said, you know what, right now, I need y'all to pay attention. I need you, don't miss this. I said, there's something about these so-called aliens. And I just put it on the shelf. I just laid it on the shelf. Months later, God began to give me revelation. Started to give me insight. It's a song they are demons. Mm, my Lord. They are demons dressed in so-called alien clothes. They are ancient spirits that have been dethroned and declothed. Yes, my Lord. This is why you got the elevator. This is why you got to come up. Because your children might be sitting beside one right in your classroom. But Gerald, I'm telling you, this is why God will raise up him. See, look, see when, when in the scripture. Anytime there is something coming against the people of God, God always raise up somebody to come back. That's right. That's right. Why do you think I'm just sitting here talking and just flowing? No. What I did with him. Hallelujah. He is one that's been chosen. My Lord. Hallelujah. And so we got to cherish this chosen one. Yes. Yes, God. Hallelujah. It ain't about my son. It ain't about my daughter. It's about what God says. Yes, He's Lord. chosen. Amen. And we got the labor with him. If nobody else wanted it, he wanted it. Yes, Why? Because it's been put in. Yes, so now we got to continue to keep his heart open. Yes, because guess what? 
God always raise up somebody because there's somebody that he got to train. That's right. That's right. There's always an Elijah following Elijah. There's always a Joshua following Moses. There's always disciples following Jesus. So somebody got to initiate it. Somebody got to start it. Somebody, we got to begin to put this type of revelation in, this type of knowledge in, even though the other churches might not want to talk about it. I'm telling you, if you're not, we're on. You might not want to talk about it. You might not want to be about it. But I'm telling you right now, you better wake up and you better start getting into your word. You better start getting into the spirit and hearing what God is saying to the church in this day. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. My God. Hear what he's saying yes, to the church Hallelujah. and churches this day. Are we afraid to move? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, I'm telling you. My God, my God. So that means if there is an army of evil that's rising, there is an army of good that's rising. The Bible says, how oh, dark. He says when darkness comes, there are a gross darkness to people. This is Isaiah 60. He said, my glory shall rise. He said, when sin abound, grace doeth much more abound. Yeah, yeah. So every time evil is in oh, evil is operating, he said, there is good. Or every time I desire to do what? Good, evil. Yeah, yeah. So there's a country where there's darkness, there's always light. Yeah, yeah. My Lord. Where there's sin, there's holiness. So if this onslaught is raising up, there has to be a group, there has to be a company. I call them, y'all know, the Revelation Company. That God is raising up right now. Let me go ahead and close this because it's too much activity. I don't want to drop not swines. All right? That's the reason why I'm going to stop. So you won't be a swine. But this is what I want to do. Every young person that heard my voice and come and stand before me. Hold up before you move. If you haven't already, stop where you are. You are coming in front of me. There is an invisible altar. You're coming first and foremost to give your life up. You're coming to give your life up to the one. So the one that's up can come in and through. So he can come from the heavens. Because this word that I just released is an anointing to deal with the age. It's a power that's dealing with the age that we're living in. See, there's, see, there's a different power for each age. The Bible says that there's an age that's coming that's a glorious age. And the Bible says we have tasted of that age to come. The Bible even says it to this degree. He says you have tasted the powers of the age to come. So there are powers that are laid up for certain dispensations of time. What I'm praying for you as the apostle of the Lord has been sent by God to empower you at this moment. I'm empowering you with an anointing, with a power, hallelujah, for this age to resist the evil and the new entities that are coming upon the land. First thing first, you got to give your life up. Now my brother Brandon, Brandon Armstrong, he shared something with me that you got to give right now. Salvation. Salvation. Salvation means to save, right? In the most simplest <coughs> understanding, it means to save. The name Yahshua means to save, the salvation of God, God's salvation. Or if you shorten it, Yasha, Y-A-S-H-A, means to save. 
or Yahshua, Yahshua is God's or Yah's salvation. It simply means to save or deliver, but in this case, we're going to say save. What do you save things for? For a particular purpose. It don't matter what it is. If you have money that you have in a savings account, you are saving it for something. If you have women, if you have China, China, in your China cabinet, you save it for a special occasion. And you only use it when that purpose comes forth. That's right. That's right. I'm giving you understanding of salvation. Yes. Yes, God. Not only that, but it has been separated from the norm of life. Yes. Yes. Salvation. So if we're saying that we are saved, you're saying that you have put me in a savings account for a particular reason, Father, and you have separated me from the whole and pulled me aside. Salvation. And if you don't want that, then you are not saved. If you don't feel that you've been pulled aside, if you don't feel that you have been saved for a purpose, oh God, think about all the things that we use to save. We save, right? We got special clothes that we only wear for a special occasion. They are saved only for that. What am I saying? When God saved you, he saved you only for him. And when he's ready to use you, he pulls you out of the China cabinet. He pulls you out of your bank account. And said, here is the money that you were saving up for the house. In other words, he take your soul that he has saved, that he has set aside. He says, now, Gerald, I have pulled you for this particular, for this thing. Now go forth. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. But we don't stay saved long enough to wait on God to pull us. Yes, my God. And so when we don't feel the pull, we don't feel the tug. Mm. Hallelujah. We give up and give in, and we walk out of our savings account. Mm. We God. come out of the China cabinet. Yeah. My Lord. The vessels of honor. My Lord. Oh, God. That's why we have special days and they are saved for a reason. So I'm saying to you, you're saved for a reason. You're saved for a purpose. And if you're walking outside of your saved purpose, hallelujah, glory to God, and I'm saying hallelujah for that. You're lost. So, Kids, if you have heard me, and when you come, you're coming to be set aside, dedicated, devoted to one thing until God says it is finished. Come on up a little higher, and I make you rule over me. If you heard my voice, and you said, Pastor, I didn't quite understand everything. <coughs> I want to be in position to resist the age that I'm living in. I want to be in position to receive the, the anointing, the, this, this anointing for this age, the power for this age, for this dispensation of time. I'm coming. If that's you, stand and walk toward the altar. I'm not the altar. It's an invisible place in the spirit. This is the place where dedication is made. This is the place where life is changed. This is the place where sacrifices are made. And if you're not ready to do that, do not say it. Oh, God. So I need those 
Estados Unidos. Eu não te sou um ser que é assim, não é mais um mais outro. Eu não sou um ser que é. Você está dizendo, Father, eu estou dando minha vida up. E eu quero posicionar myself para o poder desta geração para resistir o diabo. To resist the onslaught of the enemy. To resist. Because if God says that this is going to happen, he's raising up a people to resist. He's raising up a people that will stand against it. Come on, Moses. Come on, Elijah. Come on, David. Come on, Joshua. Come on, Yeshua. Those of you that are followers of Christ. No matter what happens. Yeah. Oh God. Amen. Now I want to ask a question because I didn't see what happened. G, did you come because you came or did you come because your parents told you to come? Huh? Came by yourself.